What you guys got another video, how to install Windows 11 25H2 on a 10 year old plus PC. That's what we're going to be looking at today. Now here we have a PC that is end of life. You can see your version of Windows has reached end of support. Your device is no longer receiving security updates. If you're in this situation because your Windows 10 machine has reached end of support and you haven't extended the support for that machine for one more year, which Microsoft have offered to all of its users. But you want to install Windows 11, but your PC doesn't meet the strict system requirements that Microsoft have in place, then this video will be for you. Anyone can follow along with this video. This is going to allow you to install Windows 11 25H2 without using a Microsoft account. And we're going to be using two items. We're going to use a USB flash drive, which has to be eight gigabytes or more. And we're going to be using a Windows 11 25H2 ISO. Now, before we continue, just have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM keys, then check out the links in the video description. Once you create an account, you can then choose your order and then click on the buy now button. And what you can do is use my promo code capital B capital R 09 and apply that to your order and get a 30% discount on all your purchases on CD key sales. Once you apply that to your order, you'll get a discount and then you can submit your order. They would then send you your key and you can use that key to either upgrade from home editions to pro editions or you can activate your version of Windows like you see on the screen. Very simple and easy to do. Okay, so back to the tutorial. First, we're gonna download Rufus. Now, a lot of people have asked questions uh, whether Rufus still works with Windows 11 25 H2 on unsupported hardware and on supported hardware. That's what we're gonna be doing in this video. So first off, head over to Microsoft's website and download the official Windows 11 ISO. You can see, that this version is for 25H2. 24H2 has now been removed from their website and you will need to download the very latest, which is Windows 11 25H2 here. So select the version you need, and then all you need to do here is click confirm. This will then give you the option to choose a product language. I'm gonna be using English International, but choose one that suits you. Once you click confirm, we're gonna go ahead and let that confirm, and then it will give us the download link. So click on the download link and this will download to your PC. Next, we're going to need Rufus. Now, Rufus has been a go to for installing Windows 11 or Windows 10 for quite a few years. It's going to allow you to install Windows 11 or Windows 10 as a local account rather than using a Microsoft account. So let's go ahead and click on the download button. You can use the portable or the installed version if you want. So I've got a USB flash drive plugged in. This one is quite a large flash drive but eight gigabytes or more is good enough for what you need. Next, open up Rufus and select the ISO file that you just downloaded from Microsoft. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right here. Click open, we can click open, and now we have our ISO file selected. We're gonna do a standard Windows installation right here. Partition scheme, GPT is for UEFI BIOSes, which are newer computers. Old legacy hardware is gonna be MBR. So we're going to select MBR because we have an old Lenovo laptop. So we're going to click on start and now we can set up our Windows user experience. Remove required four gigabyte plus uh, RAM and also secure boot and TPM 2.0 if you've got old legacy hardware like I do here. Remove requirements for online Microsoft account. Choose your name for your local account that you want to create right here. We're going to set the regional options as the same values as this user and disable data collection and skip privacy questions during the installation and disable BitLocker as well. And we're also going to use this Windows CA 2023 signed bootload as required as compatible target PC. We're going to check mark all of these because we're using an old Lenovo Yoga 260 and we basically have an old i5 6700 i think it is or 6500 cpu in there which is basically an old unsupported cpu and old hardware which isn't supported so we're going to check mark all of these it's going to then warn us that the data on that usb flash drive is going to be erased i'm going to click ok to erase the drive and install our iso onto that usb flash drive now once this has been completed we can either do an in-place upgrade or we can do a clean install also, if you didn't know whether your partition scheme is 
either MBR or GPT, you can go to system information. Now, this machine I'm on right here is a modern machine, but I'm going to be installing this onto an old legacy hardware. It will tell you right here the BIOS mode is UEFI for this particular machine I'm using right here. But if it was an older machine, which I'm going to be installing it onto, it says legacy, and that means it's MBR. So you'll need to be able to select which version you want right there. So that is all now finished, and we now have our USB flash drive with Windows 11 25 H2 on it. Good practice is to head over to the manufacturer's website and download all of the network drivers for your system. You can download all of the drivers if you wish, but it's important because when you're installed in it, we're not going to have any internet connection and the network drivers might not be installed. Uh, and that means that you will be missing a network driver once you've finished and completed the Windows installation. So it's important to have these to hand on the USB flash drive. So I'm going to download all of the Wi-Fi drivers, the chipset drivers, and all of the other drivers that are necessary for this laptop because it is pretty old. I'm going to create a folder inside the USB flash drive called drivers, and I'm going to be downloading and putting all of the drivers inside of this drivers folder on the USB flash drive that I've just created with Rufus. This way, when we've installed Windows, we can just go to our drivers and install these onto the system and we should have internet connectivity. Now to do it in place upgrade, you can just click on this setup.exe file from inside the USB flash drive and this will then create a in place upgrade if you wanna keep all of your data and install Windows 11 over the top of Windows 10. Uh, I prefer to do a clean install when going from Windows 10 to Windows 11 because it's the best way to possible back all your data up and do a nice fresh clean install. It's probably the best way to get a good install on your system. So make sure you change the boot order and your drive may look something like this where you've got partitions on there that need to be erased. So just highlight the partitions that are related to your operating system and click delete partition. This will remove all of the partitions that are being used by Windows or your previous installation, make sure you have all your data backed up before you start deleting partitions here. We're not looking to delete the partition, which is our USB flash drive. We're just concentrating on the drive in hand here, which is disk zero in this case. We now have unallocated space, which I'm going to select, and we're going to now install Windows onto that partition. So let's go ahead and do it. And it's now saying ready to install. It's going to install Windows 11 Home. It's going to keep nothing and it's going to wipe the whole system clean. It will look something like this during the installation. And I'm going to skip through here a little bit because it is pretty much the same for every single install. I'll show you the important part, which is important to you. There is going to be no internet connection at this stage. And this is the out of box experience window. You can see it's saying, let's connect you to the network. And of course, you don't want to do that because there's a little section down here that says, I don't have internet. And that's how we want to connect to our system because that way we can have a local account and not be forced into a Microsoft account. So once that's going through the install process like this, you'll notice there'll be no questions or none of that stuff coming up because we've checked to have no uh, privacy questions selected. So we don't have to do any of that. Now you'll notice there's no icons on the start menu and that's because we haven't connected to the network yet. And you probably won't do because you probably don't have the drivers to connect to the network. That is why it's important to have your drivers folder installed on the system. So right here, you can see we have a local account that we've connected to and it's called admin right there. And of course, there is the actual system right here. So go to system information and you'll see this is a BIOS mode legacy. It's an old Lenovo, as you can see, works perfectly fine. And it is Windows 11 home. And it, it has activated that version of Windows for us as well on Windows 11. And you can see it says secure boot unsupported. So it's old outdated hardware that isn't supported for Windows 11 and we've installed it perfectly fine. But now what we need to do is get the internet working so we can do some updates on the system. Before we do that, let's have a quick look at the specs. So it is an i5-6300U, so I stand corrected, and it's 8 gigabytes of RAM inside that system, and it has got Windows 11 Home 25H2 
installed on this system. So now all I need to do now is install my network driver, get the network driver installed, connect to the network, whether I want to do it via Wi-Fi. And if I have a dongle, I can connect it to uh, the LAN if I wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right here. And what we need to do is check for updates. There's probably going to be a lot of updates because we didn't do none during the installation right here. So all I need to do here now is put this one right on here, get the latest updates, because I want to have all the latest updates and it will probably download a lot of the drivers as well because we did just install the network driver and none of the other drivers. So it should go through and download all of those for us during the Windows updates. Now, I'd advise you to probably get all your drivers from the manufacturer's website because that way you'll get all of the drivers that are known for that laptop rather than having Microsoft uh, choose which drivers are right for your system because sometimes they use old outdated drivers. And you can see right there, the downloads are coming down. So the Windows updates is working perfectly fine on this unsupported hardware. How long this will last, who knows? Microsoft could pull the plug on this at any time. So bear that in mind. Anyway, I hope this video has been some help. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Quick shout out to my YouTube members. I do appreciate the support and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.